First, I want to express my deepest gratitude to everyone who has worked to organize this historic gathering, Rashida Bambre, Saidia Hartman, Tina Kampt, and of course, Simone Lee. I also want to give thanks to all of the black women, including generations past, whose everyday life and labors continue to sustain the intellectual, artistic, and political flourishing of black feminist practice in all of its multiplicity. Awaiting her verb. In a speculative piece entitled The End of White Supremacy in American Romance, Saidia Hartman provocatively suggests that extinction could very well be the only thing that could, quote, bridge the gulf between the sovereign and the fungible, end quote. Indeed, perhaps blackness could always have been said to signal the unraveling or flailing of the project of enclosure, which authorizes itself under the banner of sovereignty. For blackness is precisely an ongoing eruption of the imminently unsovereign, which the state and its analogs work obsessively to malign and repress, even at their own expense. The limits to and spuriousness of sovereignty's pretensions, whether figured in the nation state, the empire, the settler colony, or the individuated subject, are disclosed everywhere and all the time by black traditions whose variegated practices of gathering, of attention, and mutual aid however circumscribed, tend toward the impossible artistry of shared preservation. Our beleaguered breath, which is ceaselessly made to come before the asphyxiations of the world, but which we nevertheless hold and are held by in this reverend togetherness. A body horizontal, recumbent, but not prone. A body laid low, passive but not submissive, the incomplete view of this body, half buried, at once tremulous and recessive, suggests that this apparently compliant, tractable, unprotesting body is not entirely abject. The image signifies upon the intangible allure of the turned back made so famous by William Hogarth's 18th century theory of the body's sensuous contours, a figural motif that solidified the indelible iconicity of the white female body's line of beauty. This now infamous line, exemplified by the nudes of artists such as Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres, became essential to the representation of the modern body and variously extended through 19th and 20th century vocabularies of abstraction in works by a range of artists of disparate aesthetic persuasions, including Paul Cezanne, Joseph Albers, John Cage, Cindy Sherman, and Kiki Smith. But where 20th century artists subjected the serpentine line to a series of strategically improvisational abstractions and contemporary feminist artists critically subverted the integrity of its representational motifs, Black feminist retracings of this line express a crucial difference. Undercutting the putative autonomy of the work of art, these retracings follow from a prior inscription that is also an excription from the unfolding of a vernacular tradition by which black radical praxis is marked and remarked. This is a tradition that belies the conceit that the work of art is the product of the isolated genius or the mastery of an inv individual creator. Attending to this irreducible difference requires attuning to the political and aesthetic divergences and deviations that are this tradition's inheritance and bequeathment, its gift and burden. The sense of being made a body that must bear the impossibility of a world which requires the reproduction and reproductive labor of one's body, even as it forecloses upon that body's very existence. If the viewer is troubled by the obscurity of this body's origin, it is because the body of the black has lost its head, and with it perhaps its raison d'etre. What would be the radiating center of subjectivity for the resting model has been effaced. If this figure is one who, in Franz Fanon's idiom, is predestined to wait, if this figure could be said to be waiting, it is not for the conferral of external recognition, not for the imminent canonization of black form. This is not a body that awaits being written into Western art history and its lexicon of beauty. Rather, this figure retreats even as it repeats. It at once bears and slips from the impositions of form, the imperatives of canonization, 
and the injunctions of representation. Our work understands that the existential drama of blackness is cleaved to and by the racial matterings of gender. In the words of Hortense Spillers, here is a figure, quote, unvoiced, misseen, not doing, awaiting her verb, end quote. How do we track the gendered declension between Fanon's waiting and Spillers' awaiting? Paradoxically, perhaps, contemporary black artists sign through a dispersed history of artful refusals, through black radical traditions animated as much by impossible dreams and wayward longings as by a politics endlessly deferred. And yet the shadow of a doubt, are we the ones we've been waiting for? Black performance draws us into an impossible conjunction, the unbearable simultaneity that can be said to pervade black life and embodiment of a weighted existence and a lightness of being that was never meant to be. Black performance unfolds through a mode of enfleshment whose essential breathwork exposes an ontoepistemological entanglement and rupture, an enfleshment which exposes a conceptual impasse between what Franz Fanon famously avowed as the black's relentless and irredeemable fall into, quote, an utterly naked declivity, end quote, and the black countergravity Tina Camp has theorized as that which, quote, defies the physics of anti-blackness that has historically exerted a negating force aimed at expunging black life, end quote. Black performance bodies forth an aporia that holds us in suspense. Since the mid-19th century, as Ariella Azoulay describes it, the camera shutter has opened and closed the jaws of history. What can be rendered legible by the photograph comes to index the shape, boundaries, and directives of the political. Photography is deployed to ensure that the social, the political, is everywhere and all the time understood as that which can be rendered visible. The photograph is imagined simply as visual evidence of what must be made present, its universal accessibility and intelligibility presumed as ontological fact and ethical right. But those of us who have always lived within the dark corners of the photograph must constantly remind ourselves that the concealments, interdictions, expulsions, and contortions of the aesthetic are neither incidental nor secondary to the exigencies perpetually figured as present. Can the black body or the subject it is thought to index be pictured? Does photography prefer the reflection that the mirror stage would deny us? This war unfolding beneath the facade of the visual requires us to reflect upon representation as constituted by more than what is presumed to comprise an image. As Stuart Hall has argued, quote, representation works as much through what is not shown as through what is, end quote. Once we begin to re recognize the forces of racial counterinsurgency undergirding the composition of the visible, we may begin to pay attention not simply to what the photographs visualize, but to the racial metaphysics by which they direct us to see, that which creates the conditions for what appears as well as for what is concealed. Photography alerts us to a kind of Benjaminian optical unconscious in which the ceaseless metaphysical annihilation of blackness constitutes what is visualizable through the perceptual displacement of the minor, errant repertoires of black existence. Photographic visuality, in other words, cannot be disentangled from the foundationally anti-black metaphysics of the modern world. The colonial and imperial habits of photographic worlding require the myth of origin as much as destiny. A narrational reflex painfully undone in Saidiya Hartman's Lose Your Mother, A Journey Along the Atlantic Slave Route. Hartman and Hartman's encounters with the archive reveal that there is more at stake than an ethical, political, or epistemic failure of photographic representation. To be clear, the problem is not with photographic representation per se. The issue that ought to concern us is rather the phantasmatic production of the something represented, or more precisely, how this something represented is made to appear as if it has emerged from the inconceivable horrors of the unrepresentable. Quote, the hell holes of the most horrific conditions imaginable, end quote. For Hartman, the violations of history are folded into the extant yearnings of and for those gone and forgotten. 
those continuously absented from the archive, yearnings which cannot find a resting place in this world. Absence in this context can only be rendered ancillary to some presumed prior presence. There are a host of disorderly subjects, practices, relations, affections, and passions that cannot be captured by the, photographs medium, by the photographic medium's indexical iconic function, and which are therefore cast outside of historical memory. Any critical evaluation of the photographic medium's role in materializing race, or more precisely in fabricating the singular raciality blackness is made to bear, must contend with the way ph photography's spatial and temporal logics have been structured by a metaphysics whose aesthetic regime of picturing depends upon the production of violent gaps, omissions, contortions, and eradications. That much is clear, but what is cast out of the frame is never altogether excised. What happens to an image when it encounters the trace of what Catherine McKittrick refers to as black absent present, absented presences? that which, quote, cannot be seen or heard or read, but is always there, end quote. How then do we attend to this visual surplus, a desire or suffering excessive to the image, as bound to that which cannot be pictured? Can we picture our missing reflection? Can we find it in a new image of the body, a new image of sovereignty, of politics? or perhaps every effort to return us to picturing returns us to the merciless directives of the racial metaphysics of presence. Perhaps we need, instead, to cultivate a kind of attention which embraces the declivitous underside that undercuts every enterprise of world picturing, the wounding that refuses suture. To linger within this tear in the world in Dion Brand's poetics is to re reinvent what it means to see. Thank you. <laughs>